Hello and welcome to this new episode of the podcast Self Evolution Regardless. I'm your host Maramber Homa and I welcome you to listen to this podcast about narcissism in general, toxic relationships and ways to deal with them and to save ourselves but most importantly seek self evolution regardless of the abuse. I hope you enjoy and find this episode and the upcoming ones enjoyable and insightful in any way shape or form and i thank you very much for listening now let's get started hey everyone listening to my podcast welcome again all right so last time we talked about um the comparison between what a healthy family is and what a narcissistic family is and of course i touched on some details with um the parents and how toxic they are and how they can harm their children basically by giving them uh different roles each day and triangulation comparison and all that today i want to talk about um some more of this stuff basically but uh it's a whole sea of terms and a whole sea of concepts that if we're going to dive in <laughs> i'm afraid we're going to take a little bit longer than we should uh have so um i want to uh dedicate today's episode to basically um like some tips and tricks as to what to do in terms of this issue this problem of having a dysfunctional family like this so according to um the science of psychology basically you can you can go no contact and that's going to help you to get yourself distant from your family but also to figure out and search for your soul figure out your goals figure out who you are who you once were your identity you know you search for your identity your values your standards what what built you in the first place and how to fix this false self that was built um out of your will obviously and because of the gaslighting mistreat ill treatment and all kinds of bad stuff that your dysfunctional family causes you to think and behave yeah which totally is like really really just sad to think that way to think in this way that you are incapable of doing this you're incapable of having a good relationship with someone you're incapable of um reaching your goals you're incapable of for example traveling abroad you're incapable of you know just doing the best at your job or doing the love the thing you love and start your own business for example and several endless ideas about this and just thinking all these toxic thoughts this like someone that's judge that that it's like a judge in your head that is really harsh and that keeps telling you that you're not enough that you're not strong enough you're not good enough you're not uh well behaved enough you're not um respectful enough and all these kind of kinds of traits that this false self keeps accusing you of that it's just basically lying to you it's telling you lies and you have to know that they are lies you have to realize that these things are not your true self these things you know deep down that these are not you the real you so a good tip would be to first of all go no contact because that is going to allow you to set boundaries um and try to build uh your true self again after it has been destroyed you try to recognize who you were you try to do really really some deep soul searching for who you once were your authentic desires dreams goals perception of the world 
um, thoughts about people, um, anything basically and everything. Um, second tip would be to obviously, if you cannot go no contact, because I think for, before we go to the next point, I think we should go back to the first point and mention this real quick. Uh, going no contact is really, really effective when you're actually moving away from your parents' house, especially if you're like someone who's still with their parents. So I think it's a, a, a good idea would be to move away from your parents' house first, and then you can go no contact. Because if you're still at your parents' house and they're the ones who, who are narcissistic and basically you're the one who's victim and who's suffering from this, you're still an extension of them. You're still this thing that's attached to them, of course, out of your will. And that just keeps you still hating, if you know what I'm saying. That doesn't um, make you independent. I mean, just think about it, you know? It's not really um, a thing, even if you're still in your room the whole day and they're probably, like, in a living room it doesn't mean you are basically away the whole time you're still you're you're still heard you're still there you're still present and you're still an extension to them this is something that's there's there's a bond between you and them and it still makes you stuck so the best way and the most efficient way to go no contact, like officially go no contact, is for you to decide and plan, of course, strategically on how to leave your parents' house first to to really go no contact. And it doesn't mean going no contact for like a year, but try to limit the amount of time you talk to them every now and then. Make it like once a week and make it make the conversation really short. Every time, make up an excuse and say you're going to have to go, you have an urgent meeting, you have an urgent something. And just make up something so it feels like you're always on the go, you have something to do, and um, you're not you're not um, avoiding them on purpose. Make it sound legit, because if they know, and they're not stupid really, they, they freaking know everything. So once they know that you're doing that on purpose and that you're just trying to avoid them you're basically screwed so you don't want to be screwed you obviously want to make up some smart excuses that allow you to leave the, that conversation that you know is gonna drain your energy as quick as a snap you might as well shorten that conversation and make it really short and concise and just save you a lot of energy so moving on to the next point, which was, as I said, basically to, um, which is what I wanted to mention now, according to uh, psychologists, including Ross Rosenberg, because I love that psychologist, um, well, is to observe and not absorb method. Um, I think it's a really, really good strategy for you not to be influenced by what they say and how they do things. And this works especially when you're still not out of your parents' house yet. So we can pretty much say that this should be tip number one and the other one tip number two, but they can even be used interchangeably because you can still limit the conversation that you have with your parents even when you're still in their house before you actually leave take action and leave so it can work but observing and not absorbing is actually kind of like gray rocking them but in a way you are neutral in your expression when there's something that makes them go nuts and they have this narcissistic injury and they insult you and they talk a lot of SHIT and they bring up this stuff that you basically have nothing to do with or they bring one of their delusions back into reality and you're like, what the freak is going on? 
you just pretend that you're nestling in your egg with me. But what you're doing essentially is that you are sitting there calmly, neutral in your feeling as well as in your in your thoughts and in your reaction. You're doing this to watch and observe. So literally just do that, you know, just observe how they're talking, their eyes, their eyebrows, how far they are shaking sometimes, how violent the and aggressive the gesture of their hands can be and how fast it can be. Um just just observe you know just watch their body language and listen to the tone of voice listen to that volume most of the time it's going up sometimes in the conversation it stays really long and you really have to go but they're still talking and you're like yes okay yes you're pretending that you're agreeing but essentially what you're doing is you're letting time go as they talk and say whatever it is they want to say in their narcissistic injury And once they're done, you just leave because all you do literally is just watch and do not absorb. So, okay. So we know that uh, the time you spend the most with someone is the time you get the most affected, unfortunately. Like the time you spend most with your positive friends, with your friends that accept you for who you are, who love you, who cherish you, who support you whenever you have a problem, you really feel lifted up and happy and cheerful and all all the time positive. And why not? Because we love those kind of people to be around us and we love to be around them as well. But, and also, we get affected by those who also ill-treat us, who undermine us who underestimate us who constantly compare us to others for no reason who get angry with us for the stupidest thing for being for whenever you have an achievement they just act like they don't care or cold or they display some sort of jealousy because now you're presenting the success this sort of achievement and they don't like it they see it as something like you're competing with them And these people can be any types of people, even friends, even your parents, even your siblings, even just anyone that you, because, I mean, anyone can be someone who acts like this, unfortunately. I hate to say it, but people can be like this, you know, because of reasons, I don't know, it could be jealousy, it could be envy, it could be um, hate towards you, I don't know. There could be a lot of reasons, but we over time we get this metaphysical thing phenomenon that actually how do I say that our body and soul absorbs, and that's not something that we do intentionally, obviously. We tend to feel this thing called energy. And we sort of like absorb that energy. So like I said before, whenever we are with good, positive, encouraging friends, we feel that energy and we take it. And that's how we become also happy and also excited and thrilled and really being ourselves with them and being comfortable being ourselves. But... It, it it goes the same um, the same happens when we are around toxic people who do the opposite we absorb that energy without intentionally doing so well how we absorb energy is by our reaction when we react emotionally Our emotions tend to express how we feel, basically. And whenever we we react um, with them, and we're still being undermined, underestimated, and or even neglected, 
it it just feels like like this this black energy this this dark colored energy that we are now unwillingly absorbing and so we gradually become like them we gradually treat our acquaintances badly we treat our friends the shitty way we do the shit that we don't even want to do and we never used to doing before but now we are slowly but surely getting used to them and yeah and so what this method does is basically to prevent you from that you try to observe and not absorb you just literally are neutral in your feelings especially in your reaction in your body language in your speech and everything and you are just ob- observing with your hands with your ears with your eyes with your nose even because sometimes they have some bad <laughs> breath i don't know but like these things that they just get over us and just overwhelm us we need to do something about them obviously we need to stop ourselves from being wrecked totally because we reach a moment a time when we are completely wrecked and we become another version of theirs without realizing it and then when we have children when we act a certain way then we realize oh my god i'm now becoming a version of my own mother or father or my own siblings who keeps treating me so bad you know and it's because people are just like that you know just some people are just sick and twisted in their minds and they don't like to just be happy for others you know and let me just mention this because all of us have good and evil and like we all share our good and bad sides with people some people uh we know in our lives there are some people that we know in our lives with whom we get along so well and so fast and there are intuitively of course and there are others with whom we don't get along and we get into trouble with intuitively as well so it really depends and i mean i don't know it's just something that we cannot control is i feel comfortable with this person i'm going to be my best version with this person i don't feel comfortable with this person i'm not going to be the best version of myself i'm afraid i'm going to be a little bit disrespectful i might do something that they don't like or something like that because people don't see the world the same way people's opinions and perspectives and views and feelings towards each other differ obviously some people accept that difference and they're fine with it because you know you don't have everyone um agree with you at all your points all the time uh people disagree and that's totally normal for me personally like i see it extremely normal for someone to disagree with me and we little we might have a little bit of a discussion but i see it i see the importance of disagreement as a way to learn about what that person thinks but especially a way to enrich my own perspective for example about a certain thing in the world and i hope the same goes for the other person as well because i wish that for everybody else i mean why not why not benefit from someone who disagrees with you at least you you as jordan peterson said you you become less stupid when you when you are conversating with someone who disagrees with you you know some others though do not like this idea at all and they seem to be angry and anxious and just rageous over the fact that you disagree or you see things differently from their own point of view and they might even want to impose their opinions on you because they want you to agree even though you disagree 
regardless, you know? And that's how some strategies like manipulation, gaslighting, persuasion come into place. And sellers use these strategies all the time. I mean, I've been in sales positions a couple of times and I've seen this shit happen right in front of my eyes and I freaking hated it. But I also had to use it in order for the client to buy whatever, you know. But it's common, unfortunately, and everyone, almost, almost everyone uses these strategies to get people to agree with them and trust them. And not just to buy their products, but to even agree with them on the same idea or perspective or whatever, you know. So yeah um what else is there as another tip maybe perhaps oh yeah discover yourself i mean what are you doing instead of just like i'm not offending you by asking that question obviously (laughs) i'm just saying uh so now that you have managed to set some boundaries with them you know you're trying to get away from them you're trying to not uh be affected by their own negative energy now what you do is you discover yourself you search your own soul you you rebrowse over what you really want to do or what you have wanted to do for the longest time connect with your inner child because you know when we are basically in this situation, most of the time we feel like a part of ourselves is being torn apart from us and it hurts so, so, so bad. And I I really wish none of this upon you, but I really wish that people could just stop hurting each other, you know? And so back to our topic. Um, so whenever we're in this situation, we feel like a part of us is forcefully taken away from us. And that is our inner child. What we want to do instead is to bring to life a new child in us that is as close to the other inner child as possible. But this inner child is the one who is going to forcefully manifest itself and impose itself. Because you can't possibly be okay with your inner child being taken away from you now, can you? So what you're going to do is discover a new hobby or try to relearn an an old hobby you used to do don't deprive yourself from your old hobbies that you used to enjoy or even just things or sports or whatever thing you used to enjoy because you, you you will be depressed at at a certain point you know you will hate yourself you will blame yourself harshly um you will hate yourself for being in such a situation. You'll be angry with yourself. You might even destroy yourself by self-harm and all that stuff. You really don't deserve that. You don't deserve any of that. You are worth existing on this planet. You are as important as everybody else. You do not deserve that pain. Believe me. Okay? And I mean every single single world, word. I'm sorry. And I mean every single word. So just don't hurt yourself. Please, just try to resist that temptation of trying to hurt yourself because someone made you feel a shitty way every day, okay? Just hold on to life, okay? And rediscover yourself. You know deep inside that you have potential. You know deep inside that there is something inside you that's yearning to explode and to express itself into this world. You know, don't be ashamed or afraid 
to express your creative self, your your smart ass self, your mathematically genius self, your I don't know yourself that's passionate about history and geography and science and literature and whatever kind of domain you want don't be afraid to be that person don't be afraid to even make some content and deliver it to people try to find ways to share it because right now with internet everything is possible you know everything is facilitated it's so easy right now to share information and in, in whichever form you'd like as well. Whether in video form, in audio form, in picture form, in video, in... I said video twice. In written words. Just however. You know, you, you pick your damn... Pick your damn goal. Pick your damn potential. And just work on it. Fail. And fail and fail, and fail, and you need to fail in order to learn from your failures and try to discover new ways to avoid making those same mistakes. Learn to fail in order for you to succeed. And fail best to succeed best. Okay, and sacrifice, if it takes, sacrifice money, sacrifice time, sacrifice the worst relationships you have, sacrifice even sometimes your worst, or your friends who think are your best friends, but turn out to be nothing but fake people, I'm sorry to tell you that, but some people are, sacrifice those, leave them, and work on yourself, because You cannot focus on other people before you focus on your own self. I mean, for example, think about it, this example, which is mentioned everywhere. In an airplane where it's gonna, it's about to crash and you have to use the mask. Are you going to save the people and give them your mask before you save yourself? Or you're gonna save yourself first and then save the people? Think about it. You know, it's obvious. So yeah, work on yourself and be be there for yourself. Listen to yourself. Talk to yourself. Talk. You know, it's really it's really meditative and it's really relaxing to talk to yourself. Have a conversation with yourself. I do it all the time. Have a conversation with yourself. Literally just talk. Express your emotions. Don't suppress your emotions, please. Go into your room, be alone, avoid people. And just express your feelings however dangerous they can be. However bad they can be. Seriously, just express them. And the moment... As soon as the moment passes by, you're you're completely sane. And you're normal. And you get back to normal life again. Please do not suppress those feelings. Because if you suppress them, they're going to backfire really badly. And you might exaggerate expressing them a time when you explode. And you might wreck people's lives. We, we don't want to do that. So momentarily, as soon as something that's great or bad that happens to you, express your feelings carelessly of what others have to say. If you're excited and happy and, and walking on air, express it carelessly of what others may say or may think you know you should probably not be so happy you should probably hide your happiness you should probably act calmly like fuck that like can i just express my feelings for this one minute that i have in my life that i'm that i'm never gonna get back you know and then we're gonna go back to natural life to normal life or same thing for when something shitty that happens If something makes you angry, express that anger. If something makes you sad, express the sadness. If something makes you frustrated, express that frustration. Do not suppress your feelings. Another 
tip. All right. So that's basically it. And I appreciate you listening to my podcast. If you have any comment, please, you're welcome to comment, share, or even to just listen to my podcast. And hopefully we will meet in another episode soon. So, folks, that's a wrap for this episode, and as you can guess, this is my goodbye speech. (laughs) Uh, Just kidding. I hope you found this episode enlightening to some degree. You can always like, comment, favorite, share, and even subscribe to this podcast here on Anchor FM or any other platform where, where you'll find my podcast available. Like Podbean, Stitcher, Spreaker, Acast, Radio Public, Overcast, Apple Podcasts, iTunes. And recently, I've added my podcast in TuneIn as well as Red Circle. That's where you'll find my podcast also available. I'd also appreciate your support for a very small monthly fee. If you have any topic suggestions, questions, some feedback you'd like to share, don't hesitate to send me a brief voice message and I'll take care of that. So to conclude, this was Self Evolution Regardless. I'm your host, Maram, and I will see you in the next episode.